Whenever starting out your own network, whether you have acquired from a sale, setting up a new one, or even having a look at what you have in your existing house, you may wonder how you go about this and what you need to pick out to get yourself set up. So you go ahead, you pick out what you need, then comes the big problem that everybody hates. Well, at least I do anyway. That problem is cable management. So in this video today, we will have a look at what a patch panel is, what choices you need to make, and how do you use one, and most importantly, how do I trace my cables back? Let's start with what is a patch panel? Well, if you're running cables from all areas of your house or business, you're gonna want to run them back to a central location. So what a patch panel does, it provides you a neat and tidy approach to your cable management. It is simply a line of network ports on a one or two U rack mountable unit that you can then connect your cables to. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just plug these cables into a switch? And the answer is, well, yeah, you most definitely can. However, at that point, cable management may become a little bit trickier and in the end may end up looking like this. But in reality, what you really want it to look like is this. So let's talk about the patch panel itself. These panels are not just limited to network cables, they can be used for fiber, BNC, and a variety of other connections as well. Like everything else, there are multiple options, so let's break them down and see what choices you have. First thing to look at would be the type of connection and network speed. As I mentioned before, you can get different types of panels for different connections. However, in today's video, we're more interested in the network part. So you would start by looking at your network type, so CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT or even CAT7. Each of these will give you different network speeds and different maximum network cable length that you can run. If you want to see a video on this where you want to see a breakdown of the different categories of network cables, just let me know in the comments below. There is also an option for shielded and unshielded. Now, rest assured, shielded will block your interference. However, at this point, I would probably say just be sure to use a high quality network cable. Next thing you would probably want to look at is the number of ports you require. So these come in as little as six to eight ports, all the way up to 48 ports and more. Another option you have is looking at whether fixed or modular. You can buy patch panels that are just empty slots on the front that will allow you to buy little modules and plug them straight in. So if you didn't want a full row of network cables and you needed fiber, for example, you could run a row of network cables and add in a couple of fiber modules at the end. The last one to look at I feel is fairly big as this can make it easy or difficult to install depending on your skills. You can buy yourself a panel with network points at the back. So all you need to do is terminate your cables and plug them straight in or you can get ones where you can terminate the cable straight onto a patch panel. However, this requires an additional punch down tool. Now, once you have chosen these options, it's fairly straightforward to get this set up. So let's have a look at the panel and see how it works. In this demonstration just here, we have a 48 port switch at the bottom. So you can just imagine this is racked onto a, onto a unit somewhere. We have this patch panel at the top. So just to give you a closer look at what this is, these are literally CAT6 network ports. As I said to you before, on the back side of it, um, you can either have yourself just straightforward network connections that you can plug straight into, or you can get yourself a patch panel where the cables link directly to the panel itself. For the purposes of this demo, you can imagine we have a slot just here. This cable goes in here. This, this cable runs all the way, I don't know, to another room somewhere. So that basically terminates just here. So we plug that in. We pop this, this would be racked just above your switch. And then what you can do from here is just get yourself a cable, plug it in here and plug it into your switch. Now, if you imagine this is all completely closed off, this will give you a nice clean cable looking finish at the front as the example that I showed you earlier. And using a patch panel is as simple as that. The final bit I want to cover is what you need to do when you go somewhere where there's something already installed or you need to trace some cable back. Now there are multiple ways you can do this, but there's a little handy tool that I have here, which allows me to plug this straight into the patch panel. 
what you would do is plug this into the various ports on your patch panel and then go around and test each individual port in the building. So for the purposes of the next demo, I will show you how to plug this in on a patch panel and also show you a real life example as well. So let's take a look. So for this part, I wanna show you the network tool that I was talking about. So this is a VDV2. Um, links are down in the description below to my Amazon affiliate account. Now this does do an array of different things. However, we're just gonna use it for the network testing and it also does do network cable testing as well. Um, so what you would generally do, I'm gonna show you two examples of this, one just here and I'll show you one real life example. So what we have on the back of here are numbered ports, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and generally what you would do is you would plug this into the front just here. So one, So you would plug them into the front just here. So we, for this example, I've just plugged in one to six. At the top, you can see there's a RJ45 port. Again, I'll show you a real world example shortly. Again, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on here. It goes all the way up to 24. Um, and if I plug this into the back of here, I'm just gonna switch this around. So you can imagine this is, these ports are somewhere throughout your building or house. If I plug this in, I then know that that is number one. This one is plugged into number four. And this one is plugged into number six. Now, just to show you that different numbers do work, it's easier to populate them by numbers so you know exactly where they sit. But if I was to take, for example, 24 and put it into port four, for example, we can turn this around again, go one, two, three, four. So this port just here, I can plug it in. And you can see on here, it shows me port 24. So it's probably best to use the numbering on the patch panel and set them up accordingly that way. As I mentioned, I would do a quick real life demo for you. So I'm just gonna unplug all of these at the moment. Okay, there goes all the network connectivity in my house. So let's start by popping these in, 24, 23. I have all these plugged in all the way up to nine to 24. So let's go have a look at some ports and see what we can see on the other side. So you can see we're here with one network connection. Um, we have it turned on just at the moment like this. We plug into here. And you can see we are in port 19 here. So make a note of that one. So just the next port then, same again, we plug in. And you can see, and you can see on here we are on port 21. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, let me know down in the comments below. Also do hit that like button. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more weekly videos. Everything I've used today is in the description below, so feel free to check them out. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate account and it does help my channel out. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.